So we'll be talking about two types of boundary conditions in this lecture. Before, the only type of boundary conditions we know how to enforce are zero Dirichlet boundary conditions, right? And uh, we'll be talking about Poisson's equation. And uh, what you learn pretty naturally generalizes to other types of equations. The way we enforce the zero Dirichlet boundary condition is to restrict the space. So if we have a differential equation like this, and if we know u at 0 and u at 1 is equal to 0, then what we do is we transform this boundary condition into the weak form of this equation because this is strong form, right? This is the strong form involving second derivative of the solution u. And when we go to the weak form, we have this a of u and g plus l of g equal to zero. This is the weak form, where my a for the Poisson's equation is equal to minus the integral over zero to one. So first of all, you can see that the domain, which domain we are solving the equation for, is now integrated into the weak form because that defines the bounds of this integral. So du dx, dg dx, right? So, uh, and then the boundary condition is not actually included in the equation of the weak form itself because neither A nor L actually knows about the boundary condition. So instead, what we are saying is that this is true for all G inside the space X, okay? And where my U is also in the space X. So the boundary condition is involved in this space X because X is going to be defined as all the functions, let's say U, such that U is in H1. So that, that is the Sobolev space we talked about last lecture, which means that the square of U has to be integrable within the domain and the square of the derivatives of U has to be integrable in the domain. In multiple dimensions, it means the, the square of any derivative, any partial derivative of U has to be integrable in the domain. And the boundary condition appears here. And that U at 0 equal to U at 1 has to be equal to 0. So how our zero Dirichlet boundary condition appeared was in this space, which we define both the solution and the test function. Okay, so this is how we enforced a zero Dirichlet boundary condition. Now let's get to the point of enforcing a non-zero Dirichlet boundary condition. A natural way to think about it is, let's say if we have a u0 equal to 1, just for instance. Can we just modify the weak form of the statement so that we have exactly the same weak form plus L of g equal to 0 and for all g inside the same x and u also has to also be in the same x where we define x to be all the u's where you still have to be in the same sublet space, but now u at 0 equal to 1. So let's say u at 1 equal to still 0, and u at 1 equal to 0. Can I just modify the boundary condition definition in the space? Well, we can, but we notice that something now is different. The space is no longer a linear space. Okay, so what, what is the definition of a linear space? A linear space, we talked about uh, last week, is that if I have a function u and v in the linear space, then u plus v also has to be in the same linear space. If I have u in the linear space, then any scalar times u has to be in the linear space. This is not true, because my boundary condition would not be satisfied if I have u plus v. Then u plus v at the boundary would be equal to 2 as opposed to 1. So this space is what we call 
and affine space. So let me put it as x with the bc is an affine space. So what does an affine space mean? It just means it's equivalent of one point in the space plus a linear space. So all the deltas, the difference between any two vectors in this affine space forms a linear space. Right, so if you take two uh, u and v both in this affine space, then u minus v, all the possible u minus v's would form a linear space. Because if I have u and v both satisfying the same boundary condition, then u minus v would satisfy a zero Dirichlet boundary condition, right? So affine space just means one point plus a linear space. And uh, uh, for example, strictly speaking, the linear functions we have been talking about as our, our uh, basis functions, like we have been talking about piecewise linear basis functions, uh, piecewise linear functions, they should really be called affine functions as opposed to linear functions because uh, uh, the, it actually satisfies the definition of an affine function. It's a plus bx, right? Where strictly speaking, a linear function should only contain bx. It shouldn't contain the constant term. All right. So, so affine function is a very similar to our traditional sense of linearity because uh, it's linear but like uh, uh, with a constant in it. Okay. So this poses a problem. Remember when we derive this weak form, we were deriving the weak form from the concept of projection, right? We are projecting our true solution into a certain space that are more restrictive, right? So, so when we perform a projection, we are looking, we are looking for that the difference between any point and the space in which we search for the solution, the, the, the vector, is going to be orthogonal to any vector that lies within the space. Right? So, and that any vector is actually our test function g. So our test function g, in this case, we should still have our u should be in here. But our test function g actually shouldn't be within that space. Our test function g should be a vector that lies that our test function should be the difference between two arbitrary functions within that space. All right, so g as opposed to be in this xbc should be in x0, which is the same space except for satisfying the homogeneous version of the boundary condition. Does it make sense? Because g actually represents the difference between two vectors within this x, b, c. Okay, so, so this is what happens when we have a Dirichlet boundary condition that is non-zero, is that we need to force our solution to satisfy this zero boundary condition. But the test function, which in the, uh, in the calculus of variation point of view, it represents a perturbation upon this solution it can only lie in the homogeneous version of the same space. Okay, it should only contain the linear part, it shouldn't contain the constant part.